Hi, Zach here with EC Master USA. Uh, what we're going to do today, I'm going to show you guys how to do some basic diagnosis using the log tool in the EMU software. Um, I use the log tool almost every day as people email me with you know things they're trying to sort out in the software. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll show you how to find it first. So here's our software. This is the EMU Classic. It's going to be a simu similar layout for the EMU Black. So if you go down to the bottom, you got your log menu. Um, these you can do various things, right? So you can pull up menus that just show values. Um, so if you're working on boost control, you might want to pull up this menu. You can see all the raw values as they're happening. Uh, what I use the most by far is the graph. And so if you double click that, it'll open this window, um, which is the log graph. And you can set this up in a lot of different ways. So I'll just run you through some of the basics here first. I'm just going to maximize this. Um, anyway, so from left to right, you've got the series of icons. Top left is for saving a log opening one. You can export it as a CSV file if you want to use some other kind of data analysis software. Um, you can zoom in or out. Uh, more zoom tools. This is for clearing the log. Um, this is going to get used the most, right? So you can record a log by hitting this and then it becomes a pause icon once you start recording. To stop it, you just click that again. Um, also something extremely useful here is our presets, right? So normally what I'll start with, um, I've, I tend to use the ignition preset quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to show you the fuel first and then the ignition. It just pulls up default channels. You can show up to 16 channels on here. Um, so I've got fuel pulled up right now and I'll show you, um, I know what issue we're looking for here. I'm going to kind of show you the process I go through uh, when a customer sends me a question. Uh, you got some more tools here. you got your setup, your channels configuration, logging conditions, and the help menu which actually walks you through how to use all of these. So again, the help menus are really invaluable in every menu in the software. So I think this customer, they, they called me with a misfire issue, meaning that under load um, or with revs, the car was breaking up and sounding funny. And so they sent me this log to help me, um, to have me look through it. So, you know, initially I kind of pulled up fuel and everything looked pretty normal here. So I'll, I'll walk you through what I look for. Um, you can see the TPS obviously is reading correctly. Uh, you know, you can see it move nice and smoothly. There's no, you know, noise or real problems on that channel. Uh, you can look up at the air fuel ratios, and you, a lot of it's just common sense, right? We're going to look for, for patterns and see what makes sense and what doesn't. Um, so here you can see the map value moves correctly, right? As, it, as you open the throttle, the map value rises to come up to close to atmospheric pressure, which is around 100 kPa, depending on elevation. And you see your revs moving up nicely, um, and then you see your injector pulse width, which is this purple line here. Uh, you can always look at the channel assignments over here. Um, we see injector pulse width as it goes up, AFRs come down, which makes sense. Uh, it looks like there's a spike here, like there was maybe a, a misfire or, or maybe there's too much fuel. Um, but in general, you know, on D-cell, when injector pulse width goes to zero, we see a lean reading and they get back on it. So that, that tracks, you know, relatively well. Uh, but the problem they were having with the misfire was more apparent once I switched to the ignition menu. Uh, but, you know, for anything fuel-related, really, injector pulse width is a big one. Um, just look at the values and see if they make sense, right? So, uh, and, it, and it's going to depend a lot on your injector size. I mean, these are, look like pretty small injectors, maybe, if we're getting up to 10 milliseconds. But I'm going to pull up the ignition preset and tell you what I was looking for here. Um, and again, you're going to see some of the same traces, right? Map, RPM, here's the ignition angle. We can see that um, ignition from table and ignition angle those should usually pretty well trace each other. There are going to be some other corrections for some other things in the background. You can pull up all those corrections one by one. So you can choose channel 8 and say these are all of your options for log channels. So if you go down to ignition, um, you can see ignition corrections. You can pull that up and see why there's a delta there, why there's uh, a difference between the two values. Uh, anyway, coming down to what was the actual problem? Look at the cam sync trigger tooth here. So that's basically the number of tooth on the crank trigger that the secondary trigger falls afterward. And I'll explain more about triggers in another video, but that shouldn't ever move um, if you don't have variable cam timing. And so here we see it dropping out. It goes from 24 to 1, which, you know, is pretty good indication, and the, the, we've got a problem with triggers. All right, so now that we know that there's some something that's not right with the cam sync trigger tooth, we can start looking into why that would be. 
Um, so with this customer, what I had them do was, was save a scope log, which showed that um, in the scope log, you could see that the cam sync trigger tooth and a primary trigger tooth were right on top of each other. So as the timing belt deflected with RPM, uh, you'd, the signals would overlap and it would change where the, the secondary trigger was relative to the primary trigger. So what we did, we changed to the other side of the trigger, meaning that most triggers have, you can switch them to rising or falling edge. And so we started looking at the other side of the cam trigger, which was actually the correct orientation, and it eliminated the problem. Misfire went away and, and no more issues from there. Um, so you always want to look at, at, you know, verifying your triggers is a nice starting primer uh, to make sure you don't have any issues uh, as you go through the tuning process. It's something I, I like to do from the get-go just to make sure because everything depends on those calculations for RPM. Uh, so I'm actually going to open another log and show you something. All right, so for our next example, I've opened up the EMU Black software. Uh, so I'm going to open our log here. So I had a customer that was complaining that their idle was really erratic. Their, their idle was hunting quite a bit and, and having issues. And uh, this one was actually immediately obvious to me once I pulled up just the, the, the fuel menu. Uh, so if you look here, you see a big oscillation in RPM and map values. It's just hunting up and down. And then uh, you, know, you see a very distinct pattern that matches that on the injector pulse width channel. And so it doesn't take too much looking to realize you know, or I guess maybe it could take a lot of looking. So it, it was obvious to me, but um, we need to look and see why, you know, that fuel pulse width just goes up to zero. It's, it, you know, it gets up to about 2,400 RPM every time, or 26 in that case, and just completely cuts to zero. So I'm going to start pulling up channels and see what we can figure out. So if I got the fuel preset, so I'm just going to start looking through channels here and see what makes sense. So I'm going to start looking at fuel cut to see if that's what's happening. And sure enough, you can look at your fuel cut channel on the very bottom here. And so I went back and looked at their settings, and, and the trick was they just hadn't set up their their idle duty cycle enough that it was it was idling up so high that it was hitting fuel cut, then cycling back down, then coming back up, then cycling back down. So it was this very, you know, repetitive pattern here. So all they had to do was lower their idle duty cycle a little bit and then it settled down to a nice steady idle. Um, so that was the solution for that one. So um, I'm going to show you a couple more tricks, just things that I find useful. So um, yeah, if you are diagnosing a misfire or trigger issue, one thing that you can check uh, to, to sort that out is the sparks count executed. Which Let's see, it might be under executed sparks count. This is essentially a counter that tells you every time the ECU is firing the ignition system. So you watch that count up and you know it's going to rise more quickly with more RPM, right? Because more spark events are happening. You see it settle down in the middle as RPM drops. But you want you don't want any jagged lines there, any breaks. If it flat lines, that means there, there are no sparks that are being executed. So that's something to check if you do believe you're having a misfire or trigger issue. But for sure, ignition pulse width, or excuse me, injector pulse width is a good place to start. Um, the trigger statuses, those are always helpful. Um, you know, you can look for trigger errors in the log. So you can use any of our ignition, uh, any of our ignition channels here. Let's see, let's see some of our trigger issues. Here are a couple for the cam sync. So you want to make sure the signal is present. And here you can verify that. Here they're not using it, so you don't see it. Um, so I showed you a couple of channels that can be useful. Uh, injector pulse width, obviously. Uh, we went through executed sparks count, which can show you if the engine, or if the ECU stops commanding ignition, which is clearly a, a problem. Um, cam signal present, that's useful. Cam sync trigger tooth. Again, in the example I showed you, that was moving around. That obviously indicated an issue. Um, I'm going to go through a couple more that I find really useful. So the ECU calculates dwell based on RPM and some other factors. So we can actually use the dwell error channel. If you see big spikes in that very erratic behavior, that means the ECU is struggling to read RPM. It's not getting a consistent signal, so that can indicate some issues. Scroll down here, we've got um, channels listed under trigger itself. 
So the first one of those is trigger error, which will tell you what type of error the trigger is actually having, whether there's a tooth that shows up missing or an extra tooth that pops up out of nowhere, which can happen from sometimes selecting the wrong trigger edge. Uh, often electrical noise from other channels can produce a signal that the ECU reads as an extra tooth that shouldn't be there, so that can indicate a problem. Uh, the trigger error channel doesn't give you a numerical value, it actually gives you text. So as you hover over it with your mouse, you can read what error the ECU is giving you. Uh, trigger sync status tells you if it's synchronized, synchronizing, as in like cranking the engine for first start, or if it's not synchronized. Um, so that can be useful as well, but that doesn't have as much sensitivity as some of the other channels, so that's a good place to start, uh, but it, it won't always tell you everything. Anyway, I, I think this is a helpful primer for you, I hope it was at least, um, to show you how to open the log menu, how to set a preset, how to identify channels, and then work your way through, and, and again, just approach it log logically to make sure that ignition is being commanded, that you have injector pulse width, uh, that your triggers are stable, and really that's the, the foundation of a lot of this, is just really being methodical and working through step by step by step. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.